This is Dr. Tom Roselle. After 38 years of practice and almost a million patient visits, the Roselle Center for Healing knows what works and knows how you can take control of your health and wellness. My team of doctors practice 21st century integrative medicine. Whether you suffer from chronic pain and fatigue, allergies, or headaches, we can help. Take charge of your health today before it's too late. Make an appointment today. Call 703-698-7117 or visit online at rosellecare.com. That's rosellecare.com. Dr. Tom Rosell and the Rosell Center for Healing present Ageless Health 2014, Proven Tools to Maximize Your Health, Saturday, October 18th at the Fairview Park Marriott in Falls Church, Virginia. At this all-day seminar, learn how you can feel better or feel great when the doctors from the Rosell Center for Healing each discuss a topic that directly affects your health, like your food, physical fitness, preventing injury and disease, your healing process, and more. Learn more at agelesshealth2014.com. That's agelesshealth2014.com. Dr. Tom Rosell live right now on 105.9 FM and AM 630 WMAL. Welcome to Dr. Tom Rosell live. This is Dr. Tom Rosell live in studio in Washington, D.C. Live. That's a unique situation sometimes. Anyway, I'm here to answer any and all of your questions, no matter what they are, on any aspect of alternative and integrative care. Whether you've had a problem and you've tried and you've applied and all the things that you can think of doing but you've come up with the same old nothing. Guess what? We will have an answer for you. We will be able to put you in a different direction, something that might actually work for a change. What a concept. That's why we do what we do. That's why we bring you Dr. Thomas Alive every Sunday at 12 noon and try to bring you things that are cutting edge, that are in the news. And we have a topic for you today. And also, we're here to answer your questions and give us a call at 888-630-9625. That's 888-630-9625. Love to talk to you. And if you ever want to talk to me off the air, you do that by email. It's the best way. It's the fastest way. Go to rosellecare.com. That's R-O-S-E-L-L-E-C-A-R-E.com. Send me a note. I will get back to you. Uh, If you need to talk to one of my doctors ahead of time, you can always call us at 703-698-7117. That's 703-698-7117. And ask to speak to one of my doctors. But here today, 888-630-9625. So what are we going to talk about? Very interesting topic, one that has been all over the news and the television, the radio, and everybody has an opinion. Well, we have another opinion. We have one that might be able to actually shed some light on what's going on and guess what? A way to fix things. What am I talking about? I'm talking about concussions, concussive forces, those things that affect your brain, your spinal cord, and don't allow you to mentate and function at the levels that you're supposed to. Forget about the symptoms that are broad ranging from everything from migraines to anxiety to ADD to the unfortunate problems that a lot of people suffer with PTSD, and it goes on. Even excessive uh, compulsive disorders, those things can come about because of trauma, and sometimes trauma is very straight up, like a car accident, like a blow, but football and and, uh, getting hit under the basket, you know, playing basketball and soccer and all the things that we did as children, but also that we're doing now as adults. And here in studio, to talk about that, it'll be your host this Wednesday evening, the 18th. No, it's not the 18th. It's actually going to be the 20th of mm-hmm. August. Time is flying by. <laughs> Dr. Scott Lamb, he's going to be talking about concussions, and we're going to talk about that today and answer your questions relative to concussive impact to the head. Well, uh, thank you, for, uh, thank you, Tom. Actually, I, I got to give kudos to my uh, wife uh, walking out the door yesterday, and she gave me uh, the newspaper Ashburn Today. It's actually in Loudoun County, and, if, and what's on the front cover of it? Uh, concussion risks have parents pushing for football helmet sensors. So we've got uh, things all across the board, and, and you know, and a lot of people we keep on to have more of a focus on sports. A lot of things on car accidents here. There's a lot of things in regards to even domestic violence. Uh, our, our soldiers are having a big impact. There's a lot of information from the Department of Defense going into looking at what concussions are doing on people. Um, and then we've got those, and you were talking about the symptoms, depression. Really, really big issue with this. You know, you get you get somebody that's been hit in the head. Kids will grow up, they're fighting. You know, I grew up in an era that, you know, you, you fought in the backyard just for fun. You still do. And Yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> we still do. Particularly with my grandchildren. They beat me, though. They, they're, they're clamoring and beating on my head. No, the, the truth of it is is that, you know, starting many years ago, for example, uh, you remember those old bunk beds? Yeah. You're, you're younger than I am by, you know, a decade or so. But um, <laughs> Keep going, keep going. <laughs> no, it's only a decade. You are over 50 now. Uh, but, shh, shh. I know. 
So anyway, but they had the side rails, right? Yeah. And so the side rails would come off, and I had it on the ground, and I was climbing up the ladder, and the ladder, you know, would be put on the side, and I came back, and I fell backwards, and I just fell right on the, the guardrail and laid my head open. And, that, and because of my lifestyle, that was the first of many traumas because I played football and all the way from grade school all the way through college and car accidents and falls and the things that have happened over the last decade to me and so forth. And I've had to deal with that, and it's significant. I mean, there was a point where if you didn't know me, you couldn't tell, but if you right. knew who I was, right. you could see the shifts. Sue could tell the, you know, the difference in my, my brain. But this is the type of thing that we see not only in children but adults over a period of time but we're you know we focus on uh football because it's a major impact everybody getting clobbered but the number one sport to produce the most uh, traumatic brain injury is soccer yeah and it's actually girl soccer because it's a lot lot, lot ranger lot uh, larger range i've i've got uh, and uh, my daughter's probably listening she had a concussion playing goalie at a particular time and got struck in the back of the, the head and the neck area um, and it has to do with some different factors that are involved. Uh, one is the size of the neck to be able to restrain that kind of pressure on it. Uh, and if you have a smaller neck muscular chair, you can also have more of a whipping type of action that happens along with it. And so it's, I think the numbers, I don't have it right in front of me, is roughly about 68 times more girls' uh, soccer um, uh, injuries to the brain than it is for, for the boys themselves. It's simply because of the, the way they're built, the structural uh, structure, d- differences, structure differences in the two of them. Right. You know, my son played ball all the way through school and, and was involved in typical boy activities and so forth. And Russell was a Division One uh, athlete. And his senior year uh, in high school, when everybody in the world was looking at him, he suffered a what we call no, uh, a cervical apraxia, where he ended up with paralysis of his shoulder because he pinched a uh, nerve, pulled it in the lower portion of his neck. Mm-hmm. And But in addition to that, what was happening, because now he lost the strength of the trapezius muscle, Mm -hmm. that he began to not be able to protect himself. And he was getting more blows. He was a defensive lineman. And coming off that line all the time, he was taking much more of an impact to his neck and shoulders. So, And we see those, and we treat a lot of... Old jocks, if you will, old mm-hmm. athletes on multiple, you know, multiple fronts. Right. But you you see this, you know, this type of accident. How about the guy that just has, is in the car, right? And the kids are in the back seat of the car, and they're not even hit, but all of a sudden they slam on the brakes. What does it take to cause the brain to be injured? Well, I think one of the things you have to have, like whiplash injuries, as we're talking about it, just enough to throw the body forward where the brain kind of bounces forward and bounces back. And if you go beyond the cushion ability of the, the brain, even a slight forces in the right direction can cause some cognitive or balance or some other things and throw things off. And causing, we'll, we'll talk probably a little bit later as we go through this, uh, the dura or a dura or a torquing sensation that happens in the tissues of the of the, the system here of the skull. Well, the, you know, Dr. Scott is a very b- a bright guy and he <laughs> likes to you know name drop. The dura is this covering it's like a tent. It's like yeah. a very, very hard, hard uh, plastic wrap that surrounds the brain, attaches itself to the inside of the skull, comes all the way down. That's what the covering of the spinal cord is made out of. And it attaches in two places in the spine, and it's free-floating in between. So now I gave him a definition. Oh, okay, good. Okay, now so, you can go from there. And Dura is actually, by the way, it's also I'll throw in two as a Latin term. It means tough mother. It's very, very tough. And I remember going all the way back I to... had a very tough mother. Never mind. That's a different story. <laughs> um yeah, that's going to be another show. But uh, basically what happens, it's very, and I actually want to go back to gross anatomy class, and I had, you know, different sections when we had to take an operate on the, on the body, the, the cadaver that we had. And I remember trying to get through that. It's very, very tough. But you can also get scar tissue into that. And whip lash actions and movement and changes and the body adapts to compensations. Some of those things can pinch, and there's a lot of neurological activities associated with that that sometimes is missed and lo- is not really looked for in a lot of exams currently out there. Let's talk about what a concussion really is. I mean, we're sitting there, people hear the term concussion, and it's concussive forces. It's a blow. It's an impact. But by definition, when you uh, impact the brain, either it bounces off the sidewalls of the, of the skull or, you know, it's it, the cushion in there, that buffering cerebral spinal fluid that's producing the brain isn't adequate enough. There are things that cause many types of minimal to very exaggerated impacts, concussive forces, concussion Mm -hmm. being the end diagnosis. What happens? What really is taking place? Well, it depends on when you go down on the cellular level. You have some things where either the nerve itself, the axon, or the part of the nerve that we're talking about gets stretched 
uh, broken or swollen. And what happens, you have a reaction, an inflammatory reaction that happens on the brain. And there's various cascades of things that go on that basically try to try to handle that, but also that fluid that can build up there also can put pressures on different parts depending on where you're hit and where you're struck at. Now, the CDC says that there's about 3.8 million uh, concussions that occur every year just from sports. Right. Forget about everything else out there. So when you consider 3.8, that's 1% of the pop, actually t- almost 2% of the population, just from sport impact. Now well, there's the rest of us that get our heads beat around from all kinds of other things. Yeah, well, you look at the, if you look at the statistics, there one the other statistics they're talking about 2.5 million visits to the ER. Um, there's another statistics out there that's showing that 83% of them are undiagnosed. So how many is that? So you got to start looking at these numbers there. Um, 27,000, I think, from the Department of Defense, talking for, from uh, what happens in the military, and 80% of those 27,000 were non-combatant uh, type of injuries. Now, what's it, I mean, what are the physical manifestations of somebody who has concussive trauma injury to the brain? I mean, d- are they slight? Are they significant? They black out? Or the guy's going to die? Or are they subtle, and do they manifest all the time? And before we get into that, I want to remind our, our listeners that this Wednesday evening, the 20th of August, Dr. Scott Lamp will be your presenter at the Results Center for Healing. Love to have you as our guest. All you need to do is call 703-698-7117. That's 703-698-7117. Tell my staff you'd like to attend. We'd love to have you as a guest. As always, reservations are required, but there is no cost to these classes. So take us through. What's, uh, what are the end processes? What are we looking for? What are the symptoms? Well, there's going to be a lot of things. I think that some of the things that are being missed are the mild ones. And, again, it's going to be like I feel off, I've lost memory, uh, there's depression, there's anxieties. Uh, think of the cognitive functions that you think about. Can't quite remember things, can't remember uh, names, those kind of elements. You also have a postural balance element that sometimes I feel like I'm off center. I can't quite get my balance. I can't focus. A uh, ball player can't focus on hitting the ball correctly or I just can't get the stance right that they need to have. Um, so you have those those kind of elements. Um, headaches are really a big one. Migraine headaches start to appear that you've never had before or their frequencies have greatly increased. Um, there's numerous numbers depending on what you're, you're taking a look of, but you've got cognitive balance, you've got pain aspects, you've got uh, vestibular, which means kind of your balance elements that, that are going to play up there. Uh, all those are there are numerous uh, signs and symptoms. We'll go over all those actually in the talk. Um, but the first thing I think the first two big things are really like headaches and confusion. Well, you get you get somebody that has had an injury. All of a sudden, what they'll find this you know let's take a, a really smart person, and they can assimilate information very rapidly. They hear it, they see it, they put their hands on it, they never forget it, and now they have an impact. They have a trauma, right. and in short-term conversation in dealing with data and information, they can pull from old data, but they have short-term a difficult memory. time taking short-term memory into long-term memory. Correct. And I think one of the things is, is that's also one of the testings they do on the sidelines for people, too, and also at the uh, in ER, is like, what kind of short-term memory loss did you have? Can you remember what happened at that particular time? What, you know, if you're talking about uh, football, what half it is, uh, who you play in? Um, those kind of things, immediate type elements. Uh, they're starting to get away from, like you were talking about before, from long-term memory type thing, the questions to short-term, what immediately happened, and can you process that information right now? It's a very significant and very severe situation because most people don't understand the subtle ramifications of what takes place with any kind of brain trauma. Uh, I mean, even to the point of you know people getting ringing in the ears, right. you know, which is because of where the... Uh, if you will, the the uh, auditory nucleuses of the right. of the brain they they get hit, it pulls on it, it, uh, it impacts it. Now you've got this traumatic uh, neural ringing, this high pitched, if you will, or sometimes just a dead, dud, dull, you know, zone out type of ringing as well. Yeah, I think it's a lot. Like how how were you hit and struck? There's a lot of places. Do you do you have problems with vision because if you struck from the back of the brain or there's something called countercoup. Sometimes when you get hit from one side, the brain bounces off from the opposite side and comes back, and you'll have problems with the front part or wherever the opposite end uh, where you got struck from. So, I mean, all these play a part into what's happening with the person. So. The, the amount of force, the, str- the, the pressure that's on it, and, uh, and hopefully get into some other things that are not thought about with concussions is some inflammatory markers. Well, hold that thought because we've got to stop for a break. We'll be right back after these important messages. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rosell Live. Don't go away. This is Dr. Tom Rosell, author of Ageless Health. Health is a do-it-yourself program. 
My book, now also available in audio version, is a step-by-step -step program of how to take control of your health and wellness without drugs or needless surgery. You have the capacity to change your health and level of well-being. Take control of your health today and order Health Is a Do-It-Yourself Program. For more information and to order, please visit agelesshealthbook.com. That's agelesshealthbook.com. Dr. Tom Rosell and the Rosell Center for Healing present Ageless Health 2014, Proven Tools to Maximize Your Health, Saturday, October 18th at the Fairview Park Marriott in Falls Church, Virginia. At this all-day seminar, learn how you can feel better or feel great when the doctors from the Rosell Center for Healing each discuss a topic that directly affects your health, like your food, physical fitness, preventing injury and disease, your healing process, and more. Learn more at agelesshealth2014.com. That's agelesshealth2014.com. Welcome back. This is Dr. Tom Rizal. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rizal live in studio. Give us a call, 888-630-9625. That's 888-630-9625. My guest in studio, your host this Wednesday evening, the 20th of August, Dr. Scott Lamp. He will be presenting a very interesting topic on concussions, those blows to your brain and your spinal cord causing all kinds of problematic situations for you in the short term, but definitely in the long term. Love to have you as our guest. All you need to do is call 703-698-7117. That's 703-698-7117. Tell my staff you'd like to be there. Reservation is required. No cost, but we want to know that you're coming, so give us a call. 703-698-7117. We're talking about concussions today, the impact, subtle and significant. We're going to get into that a little bit more, but we've got a couple of people that are holding, so I want to go to the phone lines. John, thank you for being patient. How can I help you? Yes, sir. I got uh, diagnosed with muscle myeloma about three years ago, and I went through a series of cancer treatments and drugs, and I did a stem cell, and uh, it all, the cancer's gone now, but they left me with neuropathy in my feet. Uh, yeah, that's the problem. That's one of the most significant side effects of uh, chemotherapy, uh, chemotherapy and, you know, the peripheral neuropathy that you get. And for some people, if they've totally damaged the nerve roots so they, they can't come back because the, you have to understand what, what a chemotherapeutic does. It goes in and destroys tissue. It kills things. And it does kill the cancer cell with the idea that it'll get that first before it gets to healthy tissue and healthy cells, but it does damage across the board. So one of the more sensitive targets besides the cancer is your nervous system. And it can cause the, the neurological end plates to you know, uh, be permanently affected. Not in every situation, and they can be modified. So what modifies them? There's, uh, there's a lot of support uh, of giving high levels of things like B-complex, but a full-range B-complex, particularly uh, thiamine B1, uh, detoxifying the system with uh, glutamine and glutathione, and there's other pieces as well. You have to see what residuals are still within the system. Uh, acupuncture is very significant in uh, dealing with this. We've uh, treated literally hundreds and hundreds of patients uh, with uh, cancer, that have an end product symptom of uh, neuropathic pain or neuropa uh, neuropathic degeneration. So those are the things. That's where you start. Every patient is different. It depends on the approach. It depends whether it was radiation-induced, whether it was uh, chemotherapeutic-induced. You have to look at the patient's blood sugar handling as well because we know that somebody who is pre-diabetic or diabetic are go is going to have uh, problems with the nervous system, ultimately ending up with, as many people have heard, a diabetic neuropathy. So things can can be helped, but you have to look at it multidimensionally. The one thing that I would tell you to try to give your body the best recovery possible is to make sure that your diet is very, very alkaline at this point if you haven't changed it already. Cancer can't live in an alkaline environment, but the other thing with alkalinity is that it does repair and change tissue. It allows it to have the best capacity to be able to resolve many different things. That's where I would start, John. Is anything else I can throw in there with you? Obviously, we're, we're, you know, we could talk about it at length today, but does that help? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Give us a call if we can be useful to you, John. I really appreciate it. We're here at 888 630 Diabetic neuropathy or any kind of neuropathic condition is huge, and it comes about because of the poison of the chemotherapeutic. It comes about as a result of the radiation, sometimes just surgical intervention where they cut the nerves and so forth. In this case, obviously, that was not the, the situation, uh, but we want to make sure that 
you know, that you have the best capacity to resolve things, but you have to look at it and see what it was, what uh, what the deal is, and, and move on from there. Dr. Scott, let's talk about, we've got a couple minutes before the break, and okay. then we're going to come back, and our phone lines are lighting up, and we're going to get to all of our callers. Right. Uh, but let's talk about this concussive impact and the slow residual presentation of symptoms, whether it's a child or whether it's an adult particularly with children, particularly with young adults in their teens and early 20s and so forth, ultimately, this is the time they get it. How do you know and what do you do? I mean, what's the, what's the, besides picking up the phone and calling you? Well, I mean, I think one of the things is you've got to do a look at, uh, um, there's examination aspects that you have to do and take a look at it. Um, you've got some cognitive factors that uh, you need to, to uh, really work with, and uh, there's things that you test memory with, you test balance with, so on and so forth. Things can progress, too. Um, you can have something where you're fine, and uh, even on the sidelines, you be careful, uh, the athletic trainers that are out there. Um, within uh, half an hour, an hour, you could have a slow slow bleed or something like that. And that might, might happen, too, that you don't realize that slowly builds up. Um, the body also can be in a form of compensation to some extent. Um, we can have, like we were talking about the dura itself, there's a kind of like a shifting, and it can affect even something called cerebral spinal fluid, which is this thing that bathes the, the, the brain and the spinal cord and feeds it. And does that get altered function, which eventually starts showing as the body tries to compensate and deal with that, starts showing it. So you can do this slow progression of all these different symptoms. And then four months later, you're still getting things or something new is showing up. And so the key thing I think we're looking at is making sure that the, the person's not in an acute change where the blood pressure and the, uh, and the pulse rates are, are uh, out of control. And that's going to be something for the emergency control to make sure that's done before they're seeing us. But these things... Um, the, but those are the kind of things to take a look at. Let's, uh, let's hold that thought for a second. We're coming up to a break. We'll be right back after some very important messages. Don't go away. Much more information on the topic. Did you know that routine mammograms can increase radiation exposure to breast tissue 1,000 times over a chest X-ray? Now consider a simple, non-invasive, and totally safe medical procedure approved by the FDA since 1982 that can detect breast cancer five to eight years before it can be visualized on a mammogram. Infrared thermographic imaging can accurately detect the initial signs of breast cancer as increased blood supply and metabolic rate, which is recorded as heat. Why expose yourself to radiation when accurate and safe medical detection is available? Call the Thermography Center of Fairfax to schedule a breast exam today at 703-948-7248. That's 703-943-7248. For more information, visit www.thermographyscan.net. That's thermographyscan.net for the Thermography Center of Fairfax. The Roselle Center for Healing is a proud supporter of breast cancer awareness and reminds you to conduct a monthly breast self-examination and a thermographic breast scan as part of your annual wellness checkup. Dr. Tom Rosell Live continues now on 105.9 FM and AM 630 WMAL. Welcome back, my friends. 888-630-9625. That's how you get a hold of us right now. If you'd like to talk to us off the air, you go to 703-698-7117. And that's how you register for Dr. Scott Lamp's presentation this Wednesday evening, the 20th of August, on concussions and the subtle ramifications that have occurred over a period of years. And by the way, did you know that if you have a blow to your skull, if you have any kind of concussive, concussive impact, that you increase your risk of Parkinson's and Alzheimer's and other uh, Alzheimer's. age-related, Alzheimer's, other age-related uh, dementia problems. You better pay attention and you better do something about it because why add a little bit more wood to the fire that's already smoldering and burning? There's things that you need to be aware of and things that you can do. Let's go to the phones. Christine, how can we help you? You've had six Hi. concussions. I, yes, I had six concussions and four of them are very severe. That was when I was a teenager during the war, and I had no time to rest afterwards. Oh, my. My question to you is, before I go into any details, most of the time when I question my physician about having this and that ailment, if it has anything to do with a concussion, and he says, no. I have always gotten that feeling it's like a broken bone once healed is stronger than before, and none of what is bugging me now when I'm uh, that's not, senior. Yeah, that's not true when it comes to the nervous system, unfortunately, because you end up healing with scar tissue. The first thing that you have to understand, and our, our listeners uh, broad you, is that a concussion is a bleed. It's where the brain mm-hmm. bleeds. And so when that happens, you've got 
injury. It's not just a little bruising of the brain tissue. It's, there's actual flat-out bleeding. The the other thing it added into to with that too is there's a change in function in the brain to some extent of how the I'll just say how water or blood flows and that change can actually change and create some distortions and again we talked about that before cognitive power a balance and all those kind of things and they change uh, and the brain is somewhat plastic so there are some things you can do to make that work a little bit better but it's just in compensation and some of that compensation can be some type of distortion that's that you're experiencing. What have you noticed over a period of time? Um, extreme dizziness here and there, a terrible negative attitude. I'm on antidepressant mm -hmm. and a lot of back pain. And headaches have never, never been in the front of my head. It's always up the spine in the, in the very back on the top. Christine, can I ask on some of the concussions, how... Um, how, how did they happen, and where did um, they hit you on the in, the, in regards to I, the skull? I was working for the occupation people, and I was about nine years old. I slipped, and I fell backwards down the steps into a basement, which were all hard, like stone. One concussion, I was on the bicycle, turned around to warn my friends that there's a big sand hole. I ran right into it, fell over the bike, and was unconscious for three days. Another one it was during the war. I went to go to the bathroom at night. I was so drowsy and so tired. Instead of falling backwards into my bed, I dropped myself down the stairs all the way. So those are significant impacts, yeah. all of them across the board. Yes. Yeah. These were the, the worst one was later on. I was into gym and sports. I dropped too early from an exercise on the rings, and I hit the floor with my head. So the thing that I can tell you, Christine, is that your doctor is not informed well enough to give you a proper response to your question. In fact, yes, you can have any and all of those things that uh, that you've talked about directly uh, attributable to all the the things that have happened to you. So from uh, the the depressive problems that you're having, the pain that you're having, uh, all of those things can be particularly if you've been treated, but they haven't been treated properly. They there's the you know people think that going back into you know an acute trauma, an acute concussive, first thing you do is you don't take aspirin because if you take aspirin you bleed even bleed more, more, and the concussion, the end product, the end symptoms are far worse. And that's, you know, that's implicit to our, our system. You know, here, take this aspirin, call me in the morning type of thing. Uh, Another factor is, is the modifier. Your first concussion was nine years of age. Your brain's still maturing and stuff like that, so that even at that particular age, you're more susceptible to injury than somebody who is, a, you know, of, of mature adult age. Well, is the bleeding or the lack of it uh, causing the the coma stage, or the the unconsciousness? No, the the what bleeding will cause bleeding? more damage over time because you end up with scar healing by scar tissue. So the neurological transmission becomes weakened minimally, but sometimes stopped completely, and the brain becomes disorganized, where you have the uh, the symptoms of not being able to assimilate information as rapidly as you should. It takes you longer to perceive things. But depends on where the trauma is to the brain. That's why you have the symptoms that you're you're complaining about. You have the depression. You have the negativity and so forth. But more importantly, uh, with this is that you have to appreciate that there has that there's this fluid that builds up around the brain that's there on purpose to act as a buffering system. But when you have any kind of trauma, the 22 bones of your skull that move to help move the spinal fluid. Uh, up and down the spine will lock and when they lock they cause aberrant electrical signals and symptoms that show up they'll cause the spinal cord to move or not the cord but the vertebrae to move and cause neurological pressure and stretching Alter, you know, and you can also have things like altered blood pressures and things of that nature a lot of different things that uh, can be changed with those those, those elements um, and so you're getting pressures, and the question is, is it cerebral spinal fluid creating pressures? What part of the brain? Um, and there's ways to kind of kind of look at that um, and, and see what to work with that. There's a lot of things that can be done for you um, that I've probably haven't thought about, and I think, Tom, we haven't really even kind of addressed some of those no, things I'll be talking about. Um, I don't know if this is a good time to start with that. but yeah, there, where is their help? That would be my next we question. Can, you can be helped. And one of the things you I would be. tell you to start with is, is come to Dr. Scott's presentation on Wednesday evening and 
we can, you know, we'll handle all kinds of questions specifically. We'll tell you what's available. We'll tell you what's out there. And uh, you can go from there. It's, it's first you start with information and then you see what can be applied specifically to you. And Christine, what we're going to do is we're going to cover some things metabolically that you can do, some of the nutritional uh, compounds are, that can be used. Um, one of the L- L- aspects too is what structurally can be done at this particular st- state after six concussions. Um, and also emotionally, what are the, some things with stress and aspects that can be done with that too that will be all covered? Christine, I'm going to have to cut it short, but we'd love to see you this Wednesday evening. Appreciate it. Uh, there's so much more that can be done, and people are stuck because their physicians, unfortunately, don't understand the full scope of ramifications. Everything from uh, manipulative modes and opening up the cranial plates to nutritional patterns and, and acupuncture, but also neural feedback and uh, neural reprogramming, which is mm-hmm. something that we deal with. Let's go to the phones. Dreama, how you doing? Happy Sunday, kid. Good to talk to you. Same to you. I had some questions for you. I'd like for you to talk to me a little bit about more about toxins in your body, chemical toxins. It's okay, specifically because we're going to spend a little bit of time. What's what's the question, hon? Okay, my thing of it is, uh, what do you recommend for me to take, and uh, how long does it take you to get the toxins out of your body? It all depends on what kind of a toxins in your body. Is that correct? Yep, you answered your question. Mm-hmm. So it depends on the the type of toxin. It depends on where it's localized. It depends on how old it is. It depends on whether the liver's uh, incapable of breaking things down. You have to start there. Phase one, which is cytochrome P450, is what allows the liver to break down drugs and hormones and other poisons and so forth. And then you go into multiple phases. But... Uh, those are the things that have to be evaluated first. The intestinal system has to be looked at. If the gut is permeable, meaning that it looks like a sieve, no matter what you do to detoxify, it starts dumping back into the intestinal tract and your body reabsorbs it so you have an ongoing process and the body never resolves it. If you don't stop the source of toxicity completely, 100%, it's like you get a scab that starts forming over the skin and you start keep breaking the scab open every time it has an opportunity to heal. So it has to be very, very specific, hon. I'm sorry that uh, I can't be, you know, more okay. straight up. Okay, it's in the it's in the lung area, burning sensation. It's in the throat, and it is also in the back of my head. It's affecting my vision. It's affecting my driving, and affecting my whole immune system. Again, you got to find out what the toxin is specifically and deal with that. Okay, uh, how do you determine that, sir? You can do that from uh, neural muscle function testing with specific industrial uh, petrochemicals, with the airborne allergens, with uh, exposures to certain types of fumes, and so forth. That okay, will tell do us. Can do that in the office? You can do that in the mm-hmm. office. Okay, I'm also on uh, aloe vera. I'm on liver support. I'm on uh, kills any of the uh, liver yep. or toxins. Again, again hun, those are individualists, and we have to look at them specifically. Dream, listen, talk to me in the office when you catch me. I'm more than happy to go through them with you on a very, very specific basis. Bernice, how can we help you, hun? about prostate. Um, my dad probably takes a medication for prostate, and... Um, he had a large prostate about a couple, about four years ago, and they operated. And so I've been giving him prostate revive. It's with pomegranate in and some other natural things. Is that okay to take both? It depends. You know, it, it depends on whether there's any sensitivity uh, and what the cause of the prostate. Uh, problem is. I mean, it, there's a lot of things that cause the prostate to, to swell, to enlarge. Uh-huh. And, you know, we talked about it over the programs that zinc is one of them and uh, inflammatory levels that build up in the body. So you know, the way I approach these things is that I try to be specific. I try to find out where the why is that is coming from. You know, if it's if it's zinc related, we uh, we can uh, deal with that with certain types of zinc at certain levels. You have to know more about the patient. Uh, if it's inflammatory, the first thing that you do is you have to bring down the inflammatory reaction within the system. If it's uh, hormonal related, you've got to know which hormones. If the body is shunting testosterone into the bad form of testosterone, DHT, uh, or if it's going into estrogen, if it's going to go into estrogen or estradiol. So you have to know all of those things before you can if you treat it accurately. Otherwise, you just throwing nutrients, and there's tons of nutrients. Uh, and, the, and the other thing aspect is how your sugar handling, how's your stress ability, because that plays a major role in regards to how the, the hormones uh, relate to the uh, uh, the male anatomy, and that's one of the things you really got to take a strong look at that. So a lot of different factors, you got to kind of narrow down those factors, which one seems to be the major one. It might have to be a little bit of everything. Bernice, do me a favor. So if uh, you have more data, send me an email, and I'll try to be much more specific for you and you know tell you what steps that uh, you should be taking or looking for. Out, uh, out there in Arizona. Okay, what's your email? Uh, just send it to the website, rosellcare at aol.com. So 
uh, if you go into that or just go to RoselleCare.com, and you can go right through the website or RoselleCare at AOL.com. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Bernice. Thanks for listening. 888-630-9625. That's our number here. Our number at the office, 703-698-7117. That's the number that you use also to register for Dr. Scott's presentation on concussions this Wednesday evening, the 20th of August. I promise you he's going to get into the fix and what you can do about it. And really, you can fix a lot of things. There's a whole lot of stuff that can be done. I've done it. I've had multiple concussions to this old noggin of mine, and to the that point, explains it. That explains. Be careful, Doctor Scott. <laughs> just, just be careful. You know, you have to ride all the way back home with me. So, but truth be it is that I had some significant problems, and you know, I tried to cover them up as best I possibly could. And if you didn't know me, maybe you thought that was a little bit off, but not a whole lot. But when you have a problem, when you have. Uh, recurrent headaches that just don't go away. There was never a reason for them, and you know that your diet was clean. Uh, when you have anxiety or you have depressive states, when you when you see yourself doing things repetitively over and over again, or you can't get coordination back into your system, or you can't learn and process the way you think you should be able to learn and process no matter how hard you try, your coordination on any level, your ability to stand in space often is an old trauma that hasn't been released. This is a program that you should attend and give us a call at 703-698-7117. Tell my staff you'd like to be there. Again, the only thing that's required of you is a reservation and we'd love to have you. Please join us if you've ever had a trauma or blow to your body or to your head that seems to affect any of those things that we've been talking about. It's significant. It's not because you're getting older you shouldn't have a problem. I think I think one of the things is is they talk about you know there's so much focus on sports and sports what would be a good aspect for is even some of the things I'll talk about even coaches I invite uh, invite you to come to the program too to be able to do that I'll um, I do some work with a travel baseball team um, volunteer service for them um, and so it's just good to have understanding uh, how to handle this but also military plays a bigger part there's a major aspect there with concussions from blasts and things of that nature um violent acts that we've been uh, we've been exposed to um vehicle uh, traumas whiplashes and those kind of things in fact i had a i had an injury from football myself i was playing uh um uh just outside just playing a uh, rough house uh, football and uh, i remember getting tackled we get a knot in my head and i drove everybody home and everybody was laughing at me because i couldn't figure out where where the houses they lived at you know when you th- when you think about traumas and so forth. You're sitting in a car and you come up to a stoplight and you're, you're not watching that the light turn red and you slam on the brakes and all of a sudden your head goes forward and goes backwards. It's the same type of thing as if somebody had hit you in the car from the front or for the back. Your brain is going to bounce off your skull. That is an impact. That is trauma. That's a concussive force that is being delivered. You can't ignore that type of injury either, particularly over time if you've done it repetitively or things like that that ultimately present themselves as all the symptoms that we've been talking about uh, this, this afternoon. Be there. Be our guest. Dr. Scott will give you all the intimacies of that fix, if you will. And I think right. that's what we call it. It's a fix. It's a fix. So I think one of the things I'll just uh, touch on quickly, some of the things we'll cover that some things you might not know about. We'll talk about some things on regards to cold laser, magnetic therapy, color therapy, eye light therapy, uh, nutrition, inf- inflammation, uh, prevention, uh, cranial sacral work, some of the other things on the chiropractic base. Uh, we'll cover all those and, and more. We're coming up to a break, and we're going to... Uh, kind of put this all together for you. I want you to understand some of the things that are available to you, and that's what we're going to talk about when we come back after this information. The fix is there. It's straight up. Unfortunately, drugs ain't the fix. We'll be right back. Are you dental phobic? Do you neglect your dental health because of fear and anxiety? A beautiful smile begins with exceptional dental care, and you can trust in the expertise of Soft Touch Dental Care and Dr. Michael Chung. Soft Touch Dental Care is unlike any dentist office you'll ever experience. Their warm and welcoming environment is designed to soothe fears and anxiety the moment you arrive, and they're especially pleased to pamper their honored guest patients. Dr. Michael Chung is a professional and leading expert in all areas of comprehensive dentistry, including cosmetic, sedation, neuromuscular, TMJ, and implant dentistry. 
Offering state-of-the-art technology, Dr. Chung can give you the smile of your dreams. Arrange for a complimentary consultation today with Dr. Michael Chung and experience the expertise that makes Dr. Michael Chung so unique. Call 703-319-6990. That's 703-319-6990. Or visit bestinsmile.com. That's bestinsmile.com. Welcome back. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rizal Live. We've been in studio giving you the latest and most important information, I think, on concussive brain injuries. You know, when you get your head hit and traumatized and whiplashed and fall on the floor type of impact, those all those things can add up over a period of time. If you've ever had any concussive pattern to your brain and you've noticed that you've had a symptom afterwards, sit back and think about when it occurred. When did the depression start? When did the lack of coordination start? When did you realize that you weren't able to assimilate and learn information as rapidly as you used to? When did all those things start? Was there a trauma? Were you sitting in the car, somebody hit you from behind? Did you slam on the brakes, you know, coming up to a stoplight? Were you playing sports and you butted your head against something or somebody or uh, a ball playing soccer? All of those things are critical, and they have to be used in the diagnostic realm to assessing and understanding what can be done to resolve this thing. And what we're trying to get you to understand is is resolvable. Dr. Scott, this Wednesday evening, the 20th, you're going to be talking about concussions and the impact, but more importantly, how people can resolve them, 7.30 p.m. at the Results Center for Healing in Fairfax. Right. I'd love to have you as our guest. Give us a call, 703-698-7117. We know that the the process of symptomatic presentation and the predispositions to dementia states and demyelinization states has to do with the, this cascade of inflammation that occurs right. with uh, COX-2 and so forth just mm-hmm. going screaming in the body and the degeneration that takes place. Are you going to cover that? Yeah, I'm going to cover one of the sections that's very important is inflammation because that could be a precursor for other problems. And I think uh, mentioning uh, uh, earlier to you before, I went on the car ride up, um, let's if somebody has, uh, let's say, for example, um, uh, an allergy to uh, grasses, uh, and then they're out there playing soccer, um, and they're already in an inflamed state, and then they get a head injury. Does that predispose them to more problems? And it could be. So also we're looking at inflammation after the fact. Every time you feed it, every time it makes it worse, uh, every time, and if you get those white blood cells in the brain going and getting active, they can actually go and start destroying more tissue. So inflammation is going to be a big part of this presentation. You know, last week I talked to everybody about the FDA reversing their position on aspirin because of the damage that aspirin causes and actually causing strokes and causing heart attacks. Hides things. Yes, and it hides it so you don't even know that it's taking place. But here's the situation in, uh, in relation to concussions. Let's say that you're taking aspirin and you have one of these minor blows. Right. Now, aspirin is already going to cause you to bleed. If minimally, it's going to cause you a predisposition to, to hemorrhaging. And now you've got uh, an impact of some sort, a bump. You, you fall against a wall or somebody budges you or whatever. That brain is going to move. Those are the little things that can cause a problem that we don't even realize or we take into consideration. Right. And that's, that's a big factor that, that you don't hardly see any of this kind of information coming up. And we're going to cover that strongly. Well, God forbid, you know, if they actually admitted that they were predisposing you to all kinds of things. As I said last week, you know, all the attorneys now said, if you've ever had this, uh, you know, this condition, give us a call. Now it's going to be about aspirin. Wait and see. I promise you that within the next 30 days or 60 days, they're going to be on the bandwagon and say, if your doctor told you to take aspirin, you've suffered any of these, yada, 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 give us a call, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. yeah. It, it, but anyway, give us a call for this Wednesday evening, 703-698-7117. Join Dr. Lamp, and I promise you, you're going to find things out about concussions that you didn't think existed, and but more importantly, how you can turn them around. We'll be here next week, 12 o'clock, same old place on your dial. Bye. See you then. This is Dr. Tom Roselle. After 35 years of practice and almost three-quarters of a million patient visits, the Roselle Center for Healing knows what works and knows how you can take control of your health and wellness. My team of doctors practice 21st century integrative medicine. Whether you suffer from chronic pain and fatigue, allergies, or headaches, we can help. Take charge of your health before it's too late. Make an appointment today. Call 703-698-7117 or visit online at rosellecare.com.
Dr. Tom Rosell and the Rosell Center for Healing present Ageless Health 2014, Proven Tools to Maximize Your Health, Saturday, October 18th at the Fairview Park Marriott in Falls Church, Virginia. At this all-day seminar, learn how you can feel better or feel great when the doctors from the Rosell Center for Healing each discuss a topic that directly affects your health, like your food, physical fitness, preventing injury and disease, your healing process, and more. Learn more at agelesshealth2014.com. That's agelesshealth2014.com. Thank you.